These um, alpha plus beta and alpha beta and stuff, those things I asked you to put in a box are called Vietes results. So he's a French mathematician who, um, who came up with this. And we're going to use Vietes results to answer this question, okay. along with some of the factorization stuff we looked at last week. So they give you a quadratic. What's the, uh, what's the quadratic again? x squared, is it plus x? Plus x, and is it take away, yeah, okay, minus one equals zero, is that right? Yeah. So they give you this, okay, and then they ask you for alpha to the power of six plus beta to the power of six. That's the question, where alpha and beta are the roots. Now you can see why I've shown you this in order to help you with that. Because how do you factorize x squared plus x minus one? What's that pair of numbers that adds to one and multiplies to negative one? Yeah, I'm struggling too. Okay, so I'm going to be in trouble here to work out what these are. Um, I should point out, it is possible, but isn't it better if I can work out, like the, get to the answer of the question directly rather than going about some other way? So I want you to think back to the factorization stuff that you did a little while back. Right? I want you to think about this object for a minute. I'm going to give you two or three minutes to think about this yourself and also turn to your friends and try and work out. Think about, we were looking at stuff with really high powers last week. Do you remember that? We had a look at some things where it's like, oh my goodness, a to the power of 32, what am I supposed to do with that? Okay. But eventually we sort of wore it down and we could work out what's happening. You don't have any powers here, you've got powers there. How could you possibly use these building blocks to try and come up with something like this? Have a think about it. I'll pause and let you have a shot yourself. Last week work, last week's work was a clue, okay? In that, like you look at high powers and immediately your instinct is to recoil. You're like, oh, how do I even get to that, okay? We can get to that using these building blocks. If you think of these literally like building blocks, if these are like Lego, right? Like if you just have one of these guys, like do you, did you guys play with this as much as I did when I was here, you know? You're like, oh, okay, I can, um, I can do lots of things with this. Like I can hurt people's feet, I can build pyramids. These things are powerful. Even if you just start with one, if you can add them up, then you can create incredible structures of complexity, right? So what I'm gonna do is try and think about this object in terms of those, here's the first thing I'm going to do. I noticed that even though this is a power of six, power of six, you can write these things as squares or cubes because six and six are both factorized by two and three. Does that make sense? Again, remember, factors help you see structure. So if, for example, I write this like so, alpha cubed squared plus beta cubed squared, that's just index laws, nothing dramatic has happened. But now I can see I've got the sum of two squares. I know how to factorize the sum of two squares, right? It was something we specifically looked at last time. It was the example of having to make things messier before they got better. If I showed you this and I said, hey, I want to get a perfect square out of this, what would you add to this to make it a perfect square? Yeah. Do it, fantastic. You recognize this structure pretty well. But of course, if you add something somewhere because it's convenient to you, you've now made this different. So in order to preserve the original question, you'd have to subtract it at the same time as adding it. Does that make sense? So have a look at this. This is exactly the same situation. You've got two things and they're squared. So what is it that you need to add to both of them in order to complete that square? What am I gonna have to add? I'll give you a clue. It starts with a two, just like that does. Alpha. Yep. Alpha cubed. This and this. Yeah, that's right. You see, the A and B in this case are alpha cubed and beta cubed. Okay. So I'm going to write alpha cubed, beta cubed there. But of course, if you add something in order to preserve your expression, you'd better subtract it as well. Are you okay with that? All right. Now, on the next line, I'm not finished, but you can see progress, which is important, right? I'm now going to factorize it. These things here, I put them in place because they will be a perfect square, just like these things here, okay? So it's going to be something square. And of course you can reverse, if you're not sure, you can just re-expand it and see if you get back there. Then you've got this guy over here. Now before I do any like write him down, I notice that this is very closely related to one of my building blocks, right? Do you notice that? 
I can put together some of these to get this. Right? Come back to the original equation. Let's state what these are. Let's just look at the numbers, right? In this case, sorry, in this case, what's minus b on a? Minus b, there's a 1 there, on a is just going to be negative 1 on 1, which is just negative 1. Okay. What about alpha beta, the product of the roots? Yeah, it's c on a, which coincidentally ends up being exactly the same thing, negative 1. Okay. Now, how am I going to get from this object here, what do I have to do to it in order to turn it into this object? Well, for starters, do you notice, I would have to cube it, right? Do you see that? Because both terms are cubed. Is that okay? And now you can see, oh wait, I know what this number is. This is just a number. So I can just slot it in and not have to worry about all these algebraic terms. Less stuff to worry about. So I'm going to just simplify that first to get it out of the way. Minus 2 times, what did we say the product was? Negative 1, right? Cute. Okay. So I'll deal with that in a second. Have a look again. Look at this object. It's better, it's objectively better than what I started with, right? So now think again, go back to your knowledge that you've developed over the last couple of weeks. What can you do with this? We further back, right? Sum of cubes. Sum of cubes, right? This is one of the results that you looked at. What's it going to be? Do you remember? You should have it there, right? If so Tell me if I'm remembering this right. I'm pretty sure it's alpha plus beta. Uh, alpha squared. Hold on. Minus alpha beta. Plus beta squared. How's my memory? Did I get it? I nailed it? Okay. By the way, in case you're wondering, right, uh, two things. Number one, when you have to deal with this result next year in the algebra arithmetic topic, you don't have to memorize this result. It gets given to you on something called a reference sheet because you've got lots of formulas you have to learn. Um, but pity the poor people who had to do maths before a reference sheet, so I had to memorize this result because it's still in the syllabus. The way I remembered it is, if you have a look at these um, signs, which are the hard part to learn out of this. The rest of it's actually quite easy to memorize. Um, I just remembered this acronym. The signs all relate to this plus. The first one will be the same. The next one will be opposite. And then the last one is always positive. It doesn't matter what you start with. So if, for example, this is alpha cubed minus beta cubed, everything here would be the same, except the sign would be same, so it'd be negative. Opposite, which would be positive, and then the last one is always positive. Anyhow, that's just a side note. I factorized this successfully. What's this here for? Why is that there? It, this is there because that's there, right? This whole thing I factorized, the whole thing is being squared, so don't lose that, okay? Uh, and then can you tell me, can you just evaluate, what's this going to become? What's negative one cubed? Negative one. So negative minus two times negative one will just be plus two. Okay, now have a look. We've made even more progress. Alpha plus beta, I know exactly what that is. That's just negative one. Agreed? And then you've got this thing here. Look, look. Can we do something similar with this like we did up here? I can't factorize this in its current form. What will I have to do to it? Okay, if I subtract alpha beta from here, right? watch what happens. This is going to be no longer take away one alpha beta. It's going to be take away two alpha beta. But of course, you can't just take away alpha beta because you feel like it. We've got to make sure we preserve the object. So you took it away, that means you've got to add it to compensate. So I'm just going to chuck that over here. Is that okay? It's a bit of a long mess, but do you agree that those are equivalent? Uh, and then that whole thing was squared, and then you added two on the end. Okay. Why is this helpful? What have I got in here? What is this object? Alpha minus beta, Alpha minus beta squared. Now, I'm just going to pause for a moment. This was a fine factorization. It works. You factorized it. However, in this case, not as helpful as I would like it to be. Why is that? 
Yeah, I was like, ooh, I factorized, but it wasn't towards something that I knew how to do. It would be a little bit like you look at um, uh, a, a Lego set, and you're like, oh, cool, I've worked out exactly what I need to make this, and then you, you work out what pieces you need, and then you realize, oh, I don't have those pieces. I don't have that weird like angle, shape, or something like that. So even though this is factorized, you can build this from this. This is not one of the building blocks I have access to. So that's fine. We've just sort of hit a brick wall. Rewind a little bit. Come back to here. What else could I do? Okay, so subtracting an alpha beta gave us this, which we could factorize, but it didn't end up being a useful factorization. No problem. If I did want a useful factorization, I would want this to be plus. Do you agree? That, that would be something I could do with more use down here, right? But what is it that you have to do to this to get to this? You had to add, add, I'm going to do it another color just so you can see it a little more obviously. I had to add three alpha beta in order to turn this into this. Are you following? There's a lot of algebra, but if you can see through it, now that you know you had to add, I'll keep this, add three alpha beta, what do you do to compensate? <coughs> Take it away. No problem. Okay, now let's try again. We've tried this. When I factorize it, I don't end up with alpha minus beta squared. I end up with alpha plus beta squared. That's more useful, right? With this guy hanging off on the end. But I, I know what this is. Come on, look. What is this equal to? This is minus 3 times negative 1, which is plus 3. So you can see, as I sort of chip away at this, as I discover blocks that I have access to, I can just substitute them out. Close bracket, and then that squared plus 2. Okay? I'm out of space there, so I'm going to start a new column, but you guys can continue down if you've got room. Uh, now I'm almost there. I'm almost there. Equals. Uh, there's a minus sign here, but I'm about to not write it. Can you see why I don't have to write this minus sign, actually? Because he gets squared. So really there's negative 1 times negative 1, which is trivial. Okay? So I'm going to stop writing that. But I can evaluate this. This alpha plus beta is just negative 1 squared. There's a plus 3 there. And then this object is squared. You okay with that? Plus 2. Can you finish for me? What shall I write? <laughs> Please tell me we can do this part, right? If we got through all of this and then couldn't do this, that would make me sad. This is inside here, 1 plus 3, which is 4. 